I thought this PCI Express serial and parallel port card would be easy to get working. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. That ain't working. So instead I'm doing a video about something that I thought would be a challenge to get working, but ended up being a piece of cake. It's an HDMI video capture card from Pile, the brand known for cheap stereo equipment. I'm sure they had nothing to do with this other than putting their name on it, but it's the P-Link 5 PCI Express Gen 2 4K HDR HDMI video capture card. When I bought the card it cost $89.20 although I've noticed that the price has since gone up to $112.58 and other websites are selling it for up to $162 so it seems like prices vary widely for this card. Now right off the bat I'm not a gamer I don't have any 4K equipment so the best we're going to do with this is 1080p 60. I had a special use case for this that ended up not really working out as I intended, but that was not due to any fault of this card or my computer. That's due to another reason which I'll talk about later. It supports 2160p, 1440p, 1080p, and 720p, but actually it also supports 480p and 480i. I tested it and it works. It claims to be 100% lag free. It supports most of third party video capture softwares including OBS, but I have a much simpler solution which I'll demonstrate if you're using Windows 10 or higher. It also supports Mac OS if you happen to have a Mac with PCI Express slots. Inside you get a registration card. Throw that away. You get the PCI Express card itself. A very brief owner's manual. But here they say we don't recommend using the device on Windows 7 system, but if you need you can download the driver and install it. So it does support Windows 7. I don't have any PAL HDMI video sources to test it with but it does mention 50 frames per second so it should support PAL video sources in addition to NTSC. And a link to download some kind of easy cap software. I didn't end up needing that but I'll give it a try anyway just to see what it's like. Here's the card itself with a PCI Express connector. HDMI in and out connectors on the back. And just two main chips on it. One just says EasyCap 320 and the other one is completely blank except for a pencil check mark. And otherwise there doesn't seem to be anything else in there of note except for a couple capacitors. Here's the computer I put it in. It's a Dell Optiplex 3020 from 2014. It has a Core i5 4570 CPU. It's not new enough to run Windows 11, but it is running 64-bit Windows 10 Professional. And I didn't have to install any drivers. I just plugged it in, turned on the computer, and Windows automatically found and installed the drivers for it. Now all I need to do is just go to the Windows 10 camera application. I have it connected to the camcorder's HDMI output and in a few seconds we see an infinite feedback loop of it showing what the camcorder is seeing. So this is a live capture through the camcorder going from its HDMI output at 1080p at 60 frames per second into the capture card into the computer and showing on the monitor. And now I'll try capturing some video but I'm recording this at 1080p 60 so that's what I'm going to choose and I'll give the camera something better to focus on and click the button to start capturing video move it around a little bit and and the test now I'll go here and play back what I just recorded start capturing video move it around a little bit and and that looks perfectly smooth to me it didn't drop any frames and in case you're wondering what kind of video compression and bitrate it is using, it is MPEG-4 video at 35.5 megabits per second, 1920 by 1080 at 59.94 frames per second, which is the correct NTSC frame rate. It's not actually 60. The audio is only 192 kilobits per second. I wish it was a bit higher than that. 48 kilohertz sampling rate. And it is stereo. Now I have it connected to a Panasonic camcorder, which is recording at 720p at 60 frames per second and if I go into the menu here and change the video resolution to 720p at 60 frames per second I'll capture some video from the Panasonic camcorder at 720p 
Well, for some reason that didn't record any audio, although the video looks fine. I think that's because that camcorder doesn't actually have live preview of the audio. But if I record a video and play it back through HDMI, then it will have the audio. Now I have the camcorder's HDMI resolution set to 480p. And even though the manual for the capture card said it only goes down to 720p, it supports this just fine. There's no option for recording 480p, so it's going to be upscaled. But 720p is one and a half times the resolution, so that should be a pretty clean upscaling. So this is recording 480p video. It's actually 4 by 3 aspect ratio as well. And capturing it at 60 frames per second through the HDMI capture card. To prove that it's not dropping any frames, I'm recording this at 1080p at 60 frames per second. And I'm going to play it back and capture it at 1080p 60. And then I'll switch to slow motion. And you'll see as the counter rotates, it is not skipping any teeth on the gear, indicating it is not dropping any frames. Fun fact, you need a monitor with a response time of under 17 milliseconds in order to display 60 frames per second without ghosting. And apparently this one doesn't because you can see some ghosting. But nonetheless, it does prove that the card is capturing at 60 frames per second. So far, so good. I tested it at 1080p, 720p, and 480p, and it worked fine at all three resolutions. But you notice those are all progressive. What about interlaced video? such as 1080i or even 480i standard definition. Well, to test that, I switched cameras because I'm going to use the Sony Handycam, which as you can see here can be switched to 60i, which is 1080i interlaced video. And I can even switch it to standard definition, which is 480i. And also, 480i standard definition in 4x3 aspect ratio. Now this is a test of 1080i at 60 interlaced fields per second and you'll see when I play it in slow motion that due to the de-interlacing method that it is using it'll skip every other tooth on the gear because it's dropping every other field of the interlaced video signal. Now I'm recording at 480i standard definition video widescreen and the camcorder is outputting it over HDMI as 480i and the fact that you're seeing this proves that it works and it looks fine except as I said you're only getting 30 frames per second out of it. Now this is 480i standard definition at 4x3 aspect ratio which also works except it's being stretched out to 16x9 or what I call fathead mode. However, if your media player or video editing software is capable of it, you can squeeze it back down to 4x3 aspect ratio, and then it will look fine. You may wonder if it can capture from copy-protected video sources, such as a DVD or Blu-ray player. Well, unfortunately, the answer is no, because even with the DVD player not actually playing anything, it says HDCP protection and won't let me capture from it. Actually, you can capture video, but all it does is capture this image of it saying HDCP protection. So I guess that proves that the software is not the limiting factor here. It's actually the card itself that's blocking copy protected video from being captured. And that foiled one of my planned uses for it, which was to connect it to this Panasonic combination VCR and DVD recorder. And this unit actually does output VHS tapes through HDMI. So I thought I could just connect it to this HDMI capture card and use that as an easy way to transfer VHS tapes to digital. But unfortunately, with this copy protection system, it's not letting me do that, even on a tape that I know is not macrovision encoded. I did try that EasyCap software that the card came with a link to download, but it's very basic. It can do live streaming and it can also capture video into a GIF animation, but otherwise, that's about it for its extra features versus just using the Windows Camera app. So I don't fault this card at all because it's not the reason why my intended use for HDMI capture didn't work out. 
as I planned. That HDCP copy protection is required by law on all HDMI capture devices. And I'm still amazed I could just plug this in, Windows would automatically load the drivers for it, and it would work perfectly with the camera app included with Windows. The hardest part of getting this to work is going to be just opening up your computer and installing it in the slot. Once you have that done, it's smooth sailing. And it can capture 1080p video at 60 frames per second flawlessly on a 9 year old PC and I think that's pretty impressive. So even if my intended use for it didn't quite work out as planned, this Pile P-Link 5 PCI Express Gen 2 HDMI capture card has my full recommendation.